This clip is on three categories of kids who basically are all kids who try out. Your child will be in one of these three categories. It can be middle school or high school. Uh, kids, when they begin to play on team basketball, are in one of three categories. The first category are kids who know they're going to make the team and they know they're going to play. These are among the best players, or they may even be the best players. Category number two, kids who are pretty sure they're going to make the team. Quite certain they're going to make the team. They're just not sure how much playtime they're going to get or what their role on that team might be. And then the third category of kids are kids who are not sure they're going to make the team. This is a pretty large category, and we're going to work backwards. We'll address that third category first. I'm going to introduce a photograph here, and I'm going to refer back to it several times during this clip, because the photograph itself is such a fundamental picture, and interestingly enough, uh, the young lady in this picture was only in sixth grade uh, during this shot. Okay, category number three, kids who are not sure they're going to make the team. They really should come to basics. I'm not going to oversell the service, but with this group of kids, if they're not sure they're going to make the team, there is no better spot for them. Uh, we're very good at teaching skills. We're very good at uh, emphasizing conditioning. And with this group of kids, we begin to introduce mental strength. Now, it doesn't really matter how strong you are mentally if you're in this third category of kids. You gotta improve your skill and you gotta improve your condition. For example, a lot of these kids can't use their left hand or they can't shoot with proper form or they have no idea how to move laterally and maintain the width of their feet or they don't know how to get the ball up. Right? That's required in shooting, rebounding, passing. So this third category of kid would benefit greatly by coming to basics, especially our preseason prep or any time during the year. Category number two, kids who are pretty sure they're gonna make the team, but they're not sure how much playing time they're gonna get. Again, this is a terrific location for them to be. Uh, we understand how kids compete. And when there's competition, right, the, generally speaking, uh, your son or daughter will have one or two or more players that they're up against for playing time, given that they make the team. What separates them? Well, just like in the third category, what is your skill and what is your condition? Now, we emphasize a little bit more, how do you think? Can you handle failure? Uh, what is your level of confidence? Do you play with anxiety or fear? and we help them through this and show them how to do this uh, without letting their guard down and without losing uh, their emphasis on competitiveness. So that's the second category. Now the first category, kids who know they're gonna make the team and they know they're gonna play. These are among the best players or they are the best players. It's interesting, whether it's middle school or high school, basics is still the right place to come our model is really different than what exists now. A lot of these kids in this first category and even the second category are going to be asked to play on teams and travel and play in leagues to prepare for the season. This makes no sense to me at all. Never has. Why would we compete prior to the real competition? We should prepare for the real competition. Now, within basics model, there's a ton of competition. There's no emphasis on the results. We don't care who wins. There's no league standings. We measure a bunch of skills. What is the kid's mic and drill score? What is the kid's ability to shoot in the plus one, minus one shooting drill? And we know what the numbers mean. So if they are lower on the totem pole with regard to these numbers, they're going to be simply less competitive. So this is what our preseason prep is all about. Now, with regard to that photograph, I want you to take a look at three different components. Number one, Look at where the ball is, okay? The ball is up. She's about to do a jump stop, right? And that ball is exactly where it needs to be. Number two, her head is up. She sees the court. She's gonna land here pretty quickly on the jump stop and she's gonna see and know exactly what to do. And number three, look at her feet. She's gonna land with width. 
She's gonna have space when she lands. She's gonna create space. We talk about this with the kids a lot. It's a small surface basketball. The kids who make their own space on a small surface are among the best players. And as this clip illustrates beautifully, this same player, five or six years later, keeps the ball up, pivots properly, has proper form and knocks in the shot. That player was first team All-State three times, scored over 2,000 points in high school, was a Miss Basketball candidate, and is now playing college basketball. Now, interestingly enough, that player in that picture is in sixth grade, and she's playing with high school players. This is another thing that we really emphasize. If your son or daughter is a solid player, she, he or she's in one of those, uh, that first category where they are among the best players, play them up. We encourage this. Basics actually has the ability to do this. If you have a sixth and seventh grader or a seventh and eighth grader who are among the best players, even a ninth grader, play them up with the high school JV or varsity players that we have. Play them up as high as possible. There's multiple benefits to this, not just for the younger kids, but also for the older kids. The older kids should know that there's other competition younger coming up and that they need to improve their skills in order to stay ahead. It's very competitive. So that's kind of a brief summary of um, our preseason prep and uh, helping these kids get ready for competition. And the mental strength, again, to finish up, we have no peer in helping these kids prepare in terms of their level of confidence, how to handle failure and mistakes, and then really emphasizing their commitment and their attitude, right? A lot of times these uh, last two categories, commitment and attitude, they're not where they need to be. And we have a way of uh, re-emphasizing those key ingredients to competitiveness. Thank you for listening and we hope to see your kids soon.